like a bear that didn't ingest 75 pounds of illegal narcotics dropped in the woods, FTB Cover 5 has been in deep hibernation since last summer. But that ends right now, on the first week of spring practice, as we break down the five Penn State players with something to prove between now and April 15th's blue-white game. Number 5. Tyler Warren All Baker's Dozen of our regular Cover 5 watchers might remember that Warren was listed in our Stars in the Making episode last June. In that piece, we raved about Warren's ability to snag balls in traffic, his mature, nuanced route running, and physicality shown as a run blocker. And hey, who knows? Warren could still prove our prognostication correct, and we might ultimately laugh last. But... Currently, we look like we might have been a bit overzealous. From a glass-half-full perspective, Warren doubled his receptions from 2021 to 2022, (coughs) from 5 to 10, doubled his total yardage from 61 to 123, and tripled his scoring production from one touchdown to three touchdowns. At that rate, Warren would own every record in the book for a Penn State tight end. If five more global pandemics break out and the NCAA extends his eligibility until 2029. Assuming, knock on wood, that doesn't happen, time is of the essence for Warren, especially since Penn State's tight end room has never been this deep or this talented. What's frustrating is that all the glowing attributes that led us to believe Warren was primed for an exponential leap last season didn't totally disappear in 2022. He made circus catches. He made clutch catches, like this pivotal fourth down conversion on Penn State's go-ahead scoring drive versus Ohio State. And, at times, Warren outmatched and outmuscled opponents as a blocker, just like he did in 2021. But he also dropped a few balls this past year. Blemishes that were completely absent from his resume 12 months earlier. Warren also struggled to find his footing as Penn State implemented more gap scheme run plays in the offense. At times, Warren appeared unsure of himself leading to hesitation and ineffective reps. To be fair, none of Penn State's aces really excelled in this category, according to PFF, but Warren did finish at the bottom of the deck. A return to Warren's old form will be pivotal if Penn State offensive coordinator Mike Yursich intends to find similar success in tight end-centric alignments like the T formation and the diamond formation. Number 4. Sal Wormley A penciled-in starter at guard who was liquid-papered out of the lineup due to an injury suffered in August of 2021, Penn State's Sal Wormley rebounded this past season, finishing second among all Nittany Lion offensive linemen with 818 snaps over 13 games. Beyond availability, Wormley's presence in the lineup defibrillated Penn State's flatline run game from the previous season, as the 302-pounder proved he could maul and reset the line of scrimmage against the best the Big Ten had to offer, paving the way for Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen to become household names. Wormley also displayed a clear understanding of positioning and angles at the point of attack, and showed off the footwork and athleticism needed to touch up linebackers at the second level. All of which makes Wormley's deficiencies as a pass protector all the more perplexing. According to PFF, Wormley was responsible for surrendering a team-worst 25 QB pressures and a team-worst 4 sacks. And yes, those tallies have a lot to do with Wormley seeing so much action, but it can't be an excuse. Not when Wormley's neighbor on the line, center Juice Scruggs, only gave up 14 QB pressures and one sack, despite playing 68 more snaps. On tape, Wormley had trouble anchoring against power, leaving tackling the guy or pulling the chair out from under the defender as his only recourse at times. He's also occasionally slow to strike and has inconsistent hand placement allowing defenders to get into his chest and knock him off balance. Typically, James Franklin doesn't yank incumbent starters on the offensive line, which is good news for Wormley. On the other hand, James Franklin doesn't typically have a glut of young, ready-made four- and five-star interior linemen on the roster like he does currently, either. Number 3. Harrison Wallace The only thing that Wallace, the little-used third-year receiver who just oozes athleticism from his pores, needs to prove this spring is that he can consistently catch the football. Obviously, reeling in passes is kind of a big deal, and Wallace's team-worst four drops last season were alarming, so don't think we're trying to dismiss or gloss over this major hiccup. 
But as we've witnessed in the recent past with guys like Mike Gesicki and Deshaun Hamilton, this infliction can be remedied. So we're done harping on Wallace's low negative. Because when you press play on his tape, there are so many positives to tout. Quicker than Rick Pitino in an empty Italian restaurant, Wallace's violent burst off the line of scrimmage and a deeper than expected bag of releases puts immediate stress on defensive backs, leaving them grasping at air or grasping at jersey. Where 2022 starters Mitchell Tinsley and Parker Washington struggle to separate despite their advanced route running ability, Wallace possesses a top gear that you cannot coach. Here, he's blowing by Michigan cornerback DJ Turner, a guy who just posted the fastest 40-yard dash at the NFL Combine two weeks ago. Not only is Wallace fast, he's bouncy too, evidenced in this top-floor TD reception from last year's blue-white game and this impromptu Lash Field Day footage captured on Keandre Lambert-Smith's smartphone. We'd say the sky's the limit for Wallace in 2023, but honestly, I might be placing the ceiling a little bit too low. Number two, Bo Pribula. Time to ramp up my spoken words per minute because Bo Pribula, the backup quarterback for a squad with realistic national championship aspirations, hasn't thrown a pass as a collegian. So yeah, he's got something to prove this spring. Namely, can he play? Seeking answers, Penn State coach James Franklin hinted on Tuesday that Pribula could out-rep presumed starter Drew Aller during the Nittany Lions' 15 organized team sessions this spring. That's how much of a mystery box Probula is currently. What can he handle? What's he good at? And if, heaven forbid, Probula had to take the stage and stand in the spotlight as an understudy for Aller this season, would Mike Yursich have to slap a restrictor plate on his high-octane vertical passing attack? Eh, probably not. No, he's not going to Uncle Rico balls over them mountains like Aller, but Probula has a Division I arm and throws with masterful anticipation to compensate for his average velocity. The threat Perbula poses as a runner should also unlock aspects of Yursich's zone read and RPO catalog that are completely off the table with Aller in command. Assuming Drew is here for a good time and not a long time, and that he bolts for the pros in two years, Perbula's performance over the next five weeks will serve as page one for his PowerPoint presentation on why he should be Penn State's starting quarterback in 2025. Number one, Devon Ellis. Entering his fifth year in the program, defensive tackle Devon Ellis has played a decent amount of football, 775 snaps for those scoring at home. But has he played his best football yet? Well, that's what we need to figure out. A top 300 national prospect in Penn State's 2019 recruiting class, Ellis has always been a bit of a square peg in a round hole a relatively explosive athlete who carries a decent amount of three-tech qualities that are trapped in the beefy body of a one-tech defensive tackle. That's why, over the course of Ellie's career, we've witnessed a handful of sizzle plays that tease us with what could be, but not much of the play-to-play -play consistency, or stake if you will, required to be a reliable impact starter. In fact, Ellie saw his snaps from 2021 to 2022 cut in half, while his QB pressures declined from 12 down to 5. Yes, part of that reduction had to do with the return of P.J. Mustafer from injury. That can't be denied. But Manny Diaz probably would have had no qualms slicing Ellie's a bigger piece of the rep pie if he could better handle double teams and claw gaps in the run game. And as far as interior pass rushers, Zane Durant and Hakeem Beeman are noticeably better options on third and long. Again, Ellie's is just caught in the in-between. And in order to escape it, the redshirt senior must somehow change the previously written narrative in the minds of coaches starting this spring. 